And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Archaeornithomimus. If you've been following along for the last few weeks, you will know that this is a dinosaur that appears in the Jurassic World, Jurassic Park series, because we are covering those for the next few weeks until Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom comes out. Claire mentions Archaeornithomimus to Owen in Jurassic World, so it's very brief. It was an ornithomimosaur that lived in the Cretaceous in what is now Inner Mongolia in the Arendabasu Formation. It was found in 1923 during an American Museum of Natural History expedition led by Roy Chapman Andrews, and they found theropod remains in three quarries. They found several individuals, though not much of the skull. It was described in 1933 by Charles Whitney Gilmore as a new ornithomimus species, ornithomimus asiaticus. But then in 1972, Dale Russell renamed it to Archaeornithomimus. Its name means ancient bird mimic. And it's named ancient because Dale Russell thought that it was 95 million years old. It's actually only about 70 million years old, which is still ancient. But uh, at the time, being thought of as 95 million years old, it was that made it one of the oldest ornithomimids known in the 70s. That's still funny to me, though, that it's an ancient bird mimic. How can you mimic something that hasn't evolved yet. It's <laughs> such a goofy, like, look at this thing. It looks like something I see all the time in my day-to-day -day life. It's totally mimicking that. No, it's not. <laughs> the thing it's the other way around. At, yeah. Birds today are dinosaur mimics. This isn't a bird mimic. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the type species is Archaeornithomimus asiaticus, and it's the only valid species. Going back in time a bit, there were other species that were thought to be Archaeornithomimus, but that turned out to not be true. So one of them, Othniel Charles Marsh, found foot bones in Maryland that he referred to as Allosaurus medius. Then in 1911, those bones were named a new species of Dryptosaurus, Dryptosaurus grandis. And in 1920, Gilmore renamed them as a new species of Ornithomimus. Since Ornithomimus grandis was already named, he named it Ornithomimus affinis. But then in 1972, Russell renamed those bones as Archaeornithomimus affinis. However, in 1990, Smith and Galton found that those bones were not an ornithomimosaur and were some other type of theropod. Went full circle. Started out as a theropod, <laughs> another Went type back. of theropod. <laughs> Came around to Archaeornithomimus and then looped back again. That's true. Probably. I mean, I don't know. They just had another type of theropod then. We don't know. Yeah. And then Levnisov named a third species of Archaeornithomimus in 1985 as Archaeornithomimus bisectensis, based on a juvenile's thigh bone that was found in the Bisecti formation in Uzbekistan. But now, not everyone thinks that this is actually a valid species. Gilmore did not assign a holotype specimen back when he thought it was Ornithomimus in the 30s. So in 1990, David Smith and Peter Galton published a complete description of the fossils and named a lectotype. The skull is not known, but it was probably toothless and had a beak. It may have been an omnivore, but that's not clear because there's not enough known about the skull. But if it was, that means that it could have eaten small mammals, plants, fruit, eggs, maybe even hatchlings. It was about 11 feet or 3.3 meters long and weighed up to 110 pounds or 50 kilograms. It had long legs and was fast and had a long tail to help with balance. Other dinosaurs that lived at the same time and place include the Tyrannosaur, Electrosaurus, Manoraptorin, Avamimus, Ovaraptorid, Gigantoraptor, and the Dromaeosaurid, Velociraptor. Cool. Some popular dinos. Yep. Not all that archaeo after all. <laughs> <laughs> Other than they lived a long time ago. Yeah, I guess. In the way that all dinosaurs are. <laughs>